In an unexpected move, Bank Negara's Monetary Policy Committee decided to cut the overnight policy rate by 0.25 basis points to 2.75%. According to BNM, this adjustment was a preemptive measure to secure the nation's improving economic growth trajectory amid price stability. Earlier, all but one of 14 economists polled by Reuters had expected BNM to keep its benchmark interest rate unchanged, possibly saving its ammunition for use during a possible slowdown in economic growth later. Later in the year, the central bank notes that the global economy continues to expand at a moderate pace, with the latest indicators and recent easing of trade tensions pointing to improving global activity. However, downside risks continue to weigh on the global economy, stemming from geopolitical tensions and policy uncertainties, which BNM says could cause a resurgence of financial market volatility. For the Malaysian economy, commodity sector issues, among others, point to moderate economic expansion in the fourth quarter. For 2019, growth numbers are projected to fall within expectations, while 2020's growth scenario is expected to show gradual improvement. DG.com saw net profit for the fourth quarter of FY19 drop 9.2% to $342.9 million, even as revenue held steady at $1.68 billion ringgit. According to the bourse filing, the numbers were the result of lower prepaid revenue and higher costs, although postpaid income grew. DG still declared a dividend of 4.4 cent per share for the quarter, bringing its FY19 payout to 18.2 cent per share. As for its full-year report card, net profit came in 7% lower at 1.4 billion while top line also dropped by 3.5% from 6.5 to 6.3 billion ringgit in its filing the telco said that in FY19 it had demonstrated service revenue resilience and disciplined focus in driving sustainable growth and profitable operations with solid organic postpaid revenue growth of 11.9% and internet and digital revenue of 11% for 2020 DG says it will continue to focus on structural operational efficiencies and investing in what matters. It expects flat to slow single-digit decline in service revenue and EBITDA, while its CAPEX spend will remain similar to what was spent in FY19. Datuk Sri Najib Razak today denied in court that the letters he received from Arab royalty concerning donations were faked. This was the suggestion put forward by ad hoc prosecutor Datuk V. Sitambaram during his cross-examination of the former premier for his SRC international trial. Najib said that he believed all the monies he spent from his Ambank account between 2011 and 2015 originated from donations. Sitambaram cited the purported donation letters and pointed out that they were photocopies and that no original copies were available, although Najib said he once had the original copies. Najib also divulged in court today that while he had asked former Treasury Secgen Tan Sri Dr. Wan Abdul Aziz Wan Abdullah to expedite the first 2 billion ringgit loan from Kwak to SRC, it was not an order. Instead, he blamed the pension fund, saying it was up to Kwak's investment panel to decide and that it was not his decision. Sitambaran countered with the suggestion that Wan Abdullah Abdul Aziz was bound to consider Najib's request due to the position he held. Atta Global Group confirmed today that the suspension of trading of its shares was due to a police raid at its premises in the Prai Industrial Estate in Penang on January 16th. According to a Bursa Malaysia filing, the police raided the premises, tenanted by a third party, in relation to a drug probe. It added that the police investigation would substantially affect the company financially and operationally. To recap, the Securities Commission had ordered the suspension of trading in Atta and Hang Huat Resources Group group on January 16. The SC said that the directive was issued pursuant to Sections 26 and 28 of the Capital Markets and Services Act 2007 following the seizure of accounts of several key individuals involved in these companies by the police. It was revealed on January 20th that Atta's Executive Chairman Ui Chiang Sim was remanded to assist in the investigation. The authorities have since frozen nine bank accounts under the company and four subsidiaries. Securities maintained in accounts belonging to two subsidiaries subsidiaries, as well as UI's personal bank and CDS accounts. Also included was the personal bank account of Executive Director Ng Chin Nam.
New Ace Market debutant Powerwell Holdings saw its share price jump 20% to 30 cent in early morning on investors' optimism on the company's outlook. Powerwell's core business is the manufacturing of electric switchboards and switch gears. Powerwell was Bursa Malaysia's most actively traded stock today, with over 304 million shares traded. It traded at an average of 28.2 cent throughout the day before closing 14% up at 28.5 cent. Executive Director Ricky Lee claims that the company is a proxy to the recovery of Malaysia's infrastructure projects. He explains that with the revival of mega projects such as Bandar Malaysia, ECRL and MRT3, construction activities are expected to pick up. The group had previously participated in MRT1 and the Kalanajaya LRT. Its current outstanding order book stands at 59 million ringgit.